The Simpsons Index, an online spreadsheet that is also a podcast. This is The Podcast. Coming to you out of SideQuest Studios, this is The Simpsons Index, episode 230. Hello out there, I'm your host Elliot J. O'Neill, and here as always, except when he's not his BT Callaway. Uh, hi, hi. And joining us all the way from beautiful Victoria in Australia is the guys from Four Finger Discount. Woo, 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 woo. We're here. <laughs> Featuring Guy. Hello indeed, yes, we're here, get used to it. I'll, I'll leave out the middle part. <laughs> Apologies, listen, by the way, I'm Dando. Apologies, listen, in the I have a terrible head cold, so if I don't sound like I normally would, if you do listen to our other show, I apologise, and I'll try and mute myself whenever I have to cough or sneeze or anything like that, but I'm glad to be here. I've been very excited for this. We've been putting it off for so long, mm. but I went, no, screw it. We're doing it tonight. Let's do it, so I'm very excited. What are we reviewing today, Mr. J. O'Neill? Oh, we're reviewing something old and something new, you know, in for, at Four Finger Discount. Um, you know, we're essentially going through random order here on the Simpsons Index. You guys are battling it through chronologically. So Oof. I wanted to bring you something really old that you haven't done for a while and something very new, which only like, aired last month. Well, but- you've, got, you've got an exclusive because I've never actually reviewed uh, this old one. I won't, I won't reveal it yet, this old one with Guy yet because Mitch did the show up to the first, ah, the first, oh, 10, uh, first 10 seasons. Yeah, so... Guy and I have never spoken about this episode before, so it's an exclusive. Was this your first time seeing Colonel Homer as well, Guy? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I uh, I did see it back in the day. And I've, I've actually watched this one a couple of times. It's one that I find very funny, but also very moving. I mean, hmm. am I just an old sap in that, um, <laughs> episodes where people get shown a center of human kindness or affection or respect just makes me go, oh. <laughs> I think it's a lovely quality. I definitely cried at the end of this one as well. I actually wrote a big uh, sort of two or three piece bit on this in our book that we released like four or five years ago because mm. I was taken aback when we were going back and because they said you have to do proper full in-depth reviews on your favorite episodes. And I went back to season three. I thought, I can't really remember any particular favorites from this season. Mm. And then I watched Colonel Homer and I went, wow, I forgot yeah. how great this episode was. And I watched yeah. it again like just before we recorded here today. And I cried again at the ending. That ending with the song and oh, with Marjorie Homer, mm. yeah, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, we'll get to that later in yeah. the show, though. First of all, we got to get through uh, the new stuff. We, we go new old here. But uh, first, before we do all that, uh, we also like to ask our first time guests, you know, what is your Simpsons history? Where did the show begin with you? Uh, as you mentioned, you've probably made it a very public matter, <laughs> Dando, but uh, would you mind going back to the beginning for us? For me, I, the first time I remember seeing The Simpsons, and I wrote about this in the book, was that my nan, Marlene, who's passed now, uh, I talk about her a lot on the show. She used to record The Muppet Show for me when I was a kid. I was a huge Muppet kid. Nice. And I was never allowed to watch The Simpsons. But the first time I saw The Simpsons was a commercial for Bart the Genius, the very mm-hmm. first airing of, of any Simpsons episode ever in Australia in an ad break. Because what she used to push record and go to work at six o'clock in the morning. So I'd have to watch all the ad breaks. And it was this new show, The Simpsons, coming to Channel 10. I was like, whoa, what is this? And that caught my eye. I remember I watched a few episodes and then it got to Treehouse of Horror 1. And I copied what Maggie did. I went to the kitchen, pulled the knife out of the drawer. And mum was like, well, that's it. No more Simpsons for you. So I wasn't allowed to watch The Simpsons until I think I was about six or seven. And the next episode, the first new episode I was allowed to watch after that was Treehouse of Horror 6. And so that episode always has a, a, a piece of my heart because it was just the first time that mum's infamous Simpsons ban was finally over. And it was- Yeah, on a Halloween episode, no less, the one that was the original uh, problem for your entire family. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, and it was the Homer in 3D, so everyone was super pumped for it. Mm-hmm. And, um, but yeah, so this, that's where The Simpsons started for me. And after that, I was just so obsessed with The Simpsons because it had taken... Like all my friends were able to watch it, but I wasn't allowed to. So it took me six years to be able to catch up. So now for the next like six years of my life, I was just backtracking, buying all the videotapes I could find and taping all the, all the episodes off the TV and trying to cut out all the commercials. And I was just rerun after rerun after rerun. And I became known as the Simpsons kid. With all my yeah. friends, I was the Simpsons guy. My family, the Simpsons guy. Every Christmas, every birthday, Simpsons, Simpsons, Simpsons. I mean, I still am the Simpsons guy. I still love yeah. all the Simpsons. Program, <laughs> but that's where my love, I think, I can thank my mum for my passion for The Simpsons because had I been allowed to watch it with everybody, yeah. I might have gotten over it by that point. But because sure. it was held off for so long. Yeah, it's more exciting when it's contraband. Yeah, exactly right. And I became obsessed with it. And that's where my, I think my mum's infamous band is where my love for the show properly started. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It was always the sweetest. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, Guy? Where'd the show begin with you? Well, I've got a couple of years, or should I say a couple of decades, actually, on Dando. So uh, I was uh, hitting, I think I was hitting my 20s when it actually premiered in Australia back in, was it 88, 89? It premiered in 91 in Australia, I believe. Mm. 
Oh, okay then. Oh, yeah, because we, we we were like way behind. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It was contraband for us for a little while there. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, I consider myself a bit of a budding hipster around that period in the late eighties and early nineties, and uh, you know, I, I was catching episodes of the Tracy Ullman show when they showed it on the ABC here in Australia, and they would occasionally have the Simpsons interstitials in there, or you'd read about it in magazines like uh, like Rolling Stone out of the US, and you'd be hearing about Matt Groening and how. Uh, his life in hell comics was sort of gaining a bit of traction as well and how it was, you know, the uh, hip comic du jour. Uh, so I was like, yeah, actually, this is pretty funny. I mean, I remember the one about, um, it, it wasn't exactly a Simpsons comic, but it was one about how to be a good film critic or something like that, which is what I ended up doing for a good period of my career. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I was very into graining, very into all sort of James L. Brooks kind of stuff. And when I heard that it was actually going to be a show, I mean, of course, there was this, small tsunami of hype that was actually just mm-hmm. sort of gathering power as it went along. You know, you'd you'd read about it when you were reading international magazines or something like that. And then when it finally premiered in Australia, it's like, okay, yeah, this is uh, definitely something worth checking out. First season, I was like, yeah, this is pretty good. But I think it was really around maybe three, four, five that it yeah. totally got a hold of me. And uh, I was just, oh, yeah, this is just in, so in, incredibly funny, incredibly touching, incredibly uh switched on in so many ways not just a funny sitcom not just a really well-made situation comedy but one that was just chock-a-block with references and ideas and mm. easter eggs before there were easter eggs i guess so yeah for a for a nerd like me it was like oh, i get what they're talking about <laughs> you know? and felt like i had sort of kindred spirits if um well my ex-wife used to call me home because, as you can see, it's slightly heavy set, no hair. Um, but I also felt a bit of a, a kinship with the, I guess, the makers of it. I thought, these guys are switched on. And I like to consider myself kind of switched on as well. Of course, they are a million times more switched on than I am. But, yeah, I think that was my my connection with the show to begin with and ongoing to this day. No, definitely. It certainly that legacy shines in those early episodes. Yeah, especially in retrospect, you go, wow, it was such a fresh and revolutionary mm. voice back in the day. Opinions of whether that uh, has maintained uh, remain mixed. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I want to ask, you know, where are you guys at with the show now? Like, of course, yeah, you guys are in the midst of reviewing season 16. But are you keeping up with the HD era episodes at all? So for me, I think I stopped watching about the time the movie came out. So it was about season 18. That's when I probably just stopped mm-hmm. watching. I just, I just had other interests in my life. I just sort of outgr- yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd outgrown the show. I wasn't going to sit around and watch every episode. That wasn't exciting to me anymore. Mm. But there's still those episodes throughout 16, 17, and 18 where I go, oh, I don't remember this episode at all when we're doing reviews. I have been occasionally watching some newer episodes when you see them on Twitter and everyone's sort of raving about. It's usually the Treehouse of Horror episodes or the yeah. The, um, Landmark off, ones. Yeah, the, the, all the off-template ones where you got that, mm. what, that Flanders one a couple of years ago or last year. A serious yeah. Flanders. Serious Flanders. Things yeah. like that. I'll, I'll check those ones out. But this year, I've been watching all the new ones and I've been oh. finding them legally, I assure you. But I think what's <laughs> helped The Simpsons now, and a lot of people saw it as a negative at first, but when they got bought out by Disney, right? everyone went, oh, no, they're, they're owned by Disney. They're, they're screwed. I think them being on Disney Plus has made people realize, oh, I can access this show very easily now outside of America. So for us, it was like impossible to find the new episodes. You didn't even know what station they were going to be on anymore. They moved them from 10, well, 10 plus, whatever the other channel 10 shows. Then they moved to channel seven and they just completely lost them. Yeah. Which for our international listeners, it leaving channel 10 was like heresy. Oh, that was, was, that was, that was just the final nail in the coffin for the Simpsons on free to air TV. If you ask me, but I look at it now and go, ah, now I know every Wednesday, there's going to be a new episode of the Simpsons on disney plus mm-hmm. so now i'll watch it so now i'm actually keeping up to date and i've found the episodes this season have been very good season 34 i've really enjoyed them i watched legally the mm-hmm. uh the latest one that aired on sunday night in america where crusty starts his own show which is sort of like a piss take on um on the allen show and it was really funny i really mm-hmm. enjoyed it marge gets the job as the producer on the show really good stuff so the other episodes throughout the hd era that i've caught up with have been very hit and miss and I find they start the seasons really strong and they seem to taper off towards the end. I'm not sure why that is, but I've found there's been more better than worse. And I don't understand why the show gets the flack because in my opinion, the new episodes aren't necessarily for me. They're for the younger generation. I've got my era of the Simpsons. It's kind of like I compare it to Star Wars. The new films weren't yeah. for me. The old films are for me or the, the, the 90s films were for me. 
So if you don't like The Simpsons, don't watch it. But yeah, it doesn't mean that, doesn't mean that other people shouldn't watch it. Other people shouldn't enjoy it. I, I don't like the um the idea you see on social media and the show. Well, just because you don't like it doesn't mean the show should end. There's still mm. millions of people watching the show every week. So I'm not quite sure you know what you're talking about. Mm. How about yourself, guy? Well, Dan knows right on the money there in terms of uh yeah this is a, a i won't say a new simpsons for a new generation but it is a simpsons for this generation yeah so i mean it, it's it's been a while since it was appointment viewing for me as well i think uh i'm probably in the same boat as dando when i say that around the time the film came out was it's like uh, I'm, I'm not i'm not setting the vcr or uh mm. you know any alarm to did you even set VCRs? Were well, we I'm still setting VCRs in 20, 2007? We probably were. We probably were. I probably was. Yeah, yeah I'm not, yeah. I'm not and, far behind the time. I never worked out how to use my DVDR anyway, so yeah. Nope. Yeah, I know. That was that was so hard to understand, weren't they? Your HD yeah. drives and stuff. I was just like, ah, not for me. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's been quite a while since I tuned in for new episodes. In all honesty, Habeas Tortoise, the one that we're going to be talking about today, was one of the first... Um, yeah, one of the few new ones that I've actually seen recently. And uh, look, it takes some getting used to. Absolutely. I you're mean, if you're, if you're, voice? <laughs> there is that, there is that certainly. <laughs> but uh, if you're old school like me, it, it does take a little getting used to in terms of like the visuals, the HD aspect, mm -hmm. certainly the, um, the difference in voices, not only from new actors that they brought in to um, revoice established characters, but also just, you know, a bit of wear and tear on the vocal cords of, uh, of veteran players as well. I mean, Julie Kavner is, is clearly the, um, the standout in that regard, but yeah. I mean, I think you notice it as well in, um, in the way Bart talks and the way Lisa talks. It's like, and quite what it used to be, mm -hmm. but you know, that's all right. Things, things evolve, things change yeah, and it's uh, unavoidable. You, know, you roll with it. Mm hmm Yep, well, let's roll with it indeed, because, yeah, we just watched Season 34, Episode 1, Habeas Tortoise. First released in September of 2022, it was directed by Matthew Fawn and written by Brody Gupta. In this episode, Homer notices the tortoise at the zoo has escaped and assembles a, consp a conspiracy crowd of whackpots. Uh, trying to remember what Marge called them, Confederacy of... Uh, Dunderheads or something? I don't remember. <laughs> it's a reference to Confederacy of Dunces. But... Yeah. Shout out. Uh, hey, guys, what'd you think? Well, as right. I said, I, I enjoyed it. I liked in this, the first thing was, is Jerkass Homer gone? Because that would be a good thing. Because Homer mm. was very decent and really a great character throughout this. This was the, the Homer yeah. that I remember. He wasn't mean-spirited to anybody. When somebody put him down, he didn't snap back with something even more harsh. He took it to heart. I was like, oh, I'm not... I, didn't realise in the newer era that we got this version of Homer. So I like that perspective. Yeah. Closer to your golden retriever who you yell at and it kind of seems like, oh, what did I do wrong? Yeah, yeah. So I like that. It was aspect. a little self-pitying for mm. mine, I've got well, to say. Okay. In, in <laughs> which, I, which, I don't know. I mean, if we're going to be comparing uh, Habeas Tortoise to Colonel Homer, we're sort of doing that old and new comparison. I mean... I'm sorry to jump ahead and talk about the old episode when we should be talking about the new episode. But, uh, um, you know, when Homer sort of cracks it, when Marge tells him to shut up in the theatre and he's sort of simmering on the way home, it's like, I know he's in the wrong because I'm every other patron of that cinema. I'm like, <laughs> shut up, dude. Yeah. But at the same time, I can very much relate to it because, I mean, no one likes to be told by the person that they love and whose, you know, respect and affection you want to be able just shut up, you dummy. I'm like... Mm. <laughs> Whereas in the, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if this is painting me as just a ferocious person or a content, a constantly angry person. But the way Homer's sort of um, considering that everyone considers him dumb, mm. and like, oh, I'm just a dumb. It's like, man up a little, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, does, prefer, I prefer him in that mode to the way Dan puts it, um, a jerk house home. Because I mean, we're hmm. we're deep in the weeds of uh, you know, season 15, 16. What are we in? 16 now? 16, yeah, halfway through 16 at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, where jerk house home will occasionally rug, raise his ugly bald head. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. God, this guy's a Check wreck. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like this guy. So, um, yeah, I just found him a little bit sort of, uh, well, in the early stages of the episode, at least, a little bit kind of... Mopey. Mopey. Thank yeah. you very much, BJ. What about you Appreciate guys? How do you find Homer in this? I'm going to stick with what I said earlier. It's a little bit closer to... Uh, I think you're both right. I'm going to land right somewhere in between, quite frankly. A little bit closer to our classic Golden Retriever Homer. It's definitely not the jerk ass, so I'll, t I'll take that no matter what. <laughs> yeah. 
I also enjoyed the fact that it wasn't a, a mystery, but it, like a murder mystery, but I, I'm a big fan of murder mysteries. So I liked yeah, the yeah. twist of the turtle walking out or the tortoise walking out halfway through the episode for the ad break. I was like, that's a good cut to commercial. I would keep watching for this because hmm. Homer, he solved the case, but he's doing it for the best intentions because he wants to keep this group together because what's spawned from this group, I saw a lot of similarities in what we did with our Facebook group for the patients where I started this silly old podcast, Four Finger Discount. We got 13 downloads for our first episode. When Homer put out the um the, the first message about the tortoise, when he was saying, oh, I think it's a conspiracy and he sort of mm-hmm. worried. That was me putting out my first episode of Four Finger Discount. I was like, oh my God, no one's going to care. No one's going to like it because podcasts weren't really a huge th- thing at that point. It was like 2014 or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then it sort of, it slowly grew and grew and grew. And we, we built this community where everything's safe. Nothing's a dumb idea. And I just saw a lot of similarities there. So I liked that he was trying to keep this community together. Because for example, yeah. Gil and Miss Hoover, who doesn't love that? Good for Gil. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing that stood out to me in this episode. Because this is this is canon now, Gil and Hoover are together. And I thought this esteemed panel could maybe come up with their couple name, either Goover or Ooh. Gilver. What are you feeling? Like Goober, that doesn't make sense. Uh, oh, what do you no. think? <laughs> yeah, we, it's not quite Groover. Yeah, there's no R. Uh, uh, Elizabeth and Gil. Uh, no one Gil- calls her Elizabeth. Yeah, I know. But no one calls Gil Gunderson. Like Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. What about now? Hunderson's weird name. I don't know, but regardless. Hill. Regardless. Hill. When, yeah. when they went to separate, I was like, oh no, don't do this. This is so good. They they, they love each other. This is great. And then they found a way to sort of make it continue. Yeah. As you said, it as you said, BT is now canon they're together. I was like, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah. And it was fast, but it was welcomed because I think just any permanent change to the show right now, I do like when they keep it rather than just, you know, resetting back to zero because it's like it's been 34 years. Change something. That's fine. I'm, I'm totally okay with you having these char- B characters grow a little bit. Exactly. I must admit, I'm very happy to see Gil rack up a W. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I think we all are. But at the same time, I don't know. Is it, you're right, BT. The show has to evolve and characters have to change over time. Mm. I do love seeing Gil lose. <laughs> it's when they get Gil losing right. There's a uh, I can't remember what we said about it. We did find a, there's a difference between how they used to do it and how they tend to do it now, and I forget what that is exactly. But now Kirk's Gil and Gil's something else, and it's uh, everyone's kind of moved down the conga line of shame. Yeah, don't worry, Gil will screw it up at some point. But <laughs> but it is one of those pairings that you kind of look at and go, actually makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah, sure I mean, she's going to walk all over him, but still, True. he'll be happy. He'll be happy to be a doormat. <laughs> He'll be happy for human contact of any kind. Mm-hmm. Used to sell doorbells, now he's a doormat. Um, yeah, I will say I agree, and I do Yeah, want to reiterate that point, that we do like when the show experiments with change and whatever. You know, that's mm. been some of our more favourite moments in the course of reviewing the later era of the show when they do take chances. Like, there was a recent Skinner and Chalmers episode where mm-hmm. it was just focused on them. That was, you know, it was pretty decent. And, you know, in the same thing here, I'm like, yeah, Gil and Hoover together, brilliant, whatever. These B characters can get together. This makes sense. Yep. Um, the wedding itself, I will say, I feel like this is going to be a point that I keep coming back to where the episode feels just a little overstuffed with mm. ideas and I think it gets in the way of the execution. Um, but, yeah, throwing it back to you, Guy, uh, is there a moment from this episode, for better or worse, that stands out to you? <laughs> I don't know what sort of person this uh, paints me as, but... <laughs> I was very taken with Homer cooking paella. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I, I love. I mean, we've been talking about recent episodes on on Four Finger Discount and how, in season sixteen, they're having a lot of what you might call deleted scenes over the over the yeah. end credits. It's like, mm. well, you, you know, they should have stayed on the cutting room floor. It's not adding anything. But this uh, closing credit scene in Habeas Tortoise with uh, Homer doing his TikTok where he's making paella. I'm a big fan of cooking YouTube, binging with Babish just for life, man. Um, and when good ones are really good, they're, I mean, they're not just math yeah. but they're really entertaining to watch. And this struck me as a really good cooking TikTok. And I, the fact that Homer was doing it sort of, um, I don't know, added a little spice to the mix. Uh, but um, I, I thought I thought that was really enjoyable. And actually, I loved his little paler pyramid uh, cooking uh, apron that he was wearing when he was preparing dinner for the uh, for his cyber sleuth buddies. We always go off on massive tangents whenever food is involved with the show. <laughs> <laughs> we got to stop recording around. We've it? never done that. Oh. Yeah, favorite local <laughs> shops, and we get about ten minutes in, and we go, "No one else lives in Geelong. Why are we talking about the, our favorite local kebab shop? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why are we talking about Jim Sims? You can get in Norlane. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, like Simpsons uh, in the HD era, the food looks good. Like back mm. in the classic eras, like they were just eating mush most oh, of on. the time. We, we've we've all seen the uh, Tracy Allman oh, yeah, shorts on the table, with... yeah. But but the Homer's what was it Homer's patented moon waffles, with... whatever. They, they look delicious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in concept, in execution, yes. <laughs> destroys your waffle iron. <laughs> Again, always happy to throw a reference to binging with Babish. Mm -hmm. Um, How about you, Dando? What is a moment from this episode that stands out to you for better or worse? I enjoyed the scene where they're first gathering at at the Simpsons' house and Homer's Mm -hmm. nervous when they're coming over. He's very excited. He's he's put this group together. Even though he... Are we supposed to believe he doesn't really know these guys? I guess he's never really hung out with them all that often. I don't know. But he doesn't really know much about them. They've never really hung out in a group together. But there's that moment where Gil suggests something. Can we go and shut them down? And then Homer just goes... No, no, no. Everything's safe here. You know, mm. n- n- nothing's an issue. They all go, ah, they all drop their guard. They relax. And then we get the mm. whole, bought it. They're getting excited. Every time they suggest yeah. something, bought it, bought it. I really like mm. that. I was like, hey, these guys are getting into it. They're having fun now. And Homer just sits back and he mm. looks in the um in the tray. It sees a reflection of like himself with all the little emojis of, of all yeah. the emoticons of all the um of all the people. All the positivity. Yeah, yeah. And all just like, you know, giving him a thumbs up and they're saying, yeah. And I was just like, yeah, homie, you did a good thing here. You brought these little community of people who wouldn't really have anything else in common and you've brought them together. So well done, sir. I like that. I don't know if it's by virtue of the writing. I mean, I don't know if you can sort of talk about chemistry between animated characters, you but can. this seemed like a well put together group. Mm-hmm. I'd be happy to watch more adventures of the, of the, you know, slow limit where art the help bunch. Yeah. A bit of a oh. weird mix of them, but they do work. I, I just love that. They the, the, together the, nicely. I just love the part where Gil and Miss Hoover, they sort of, they touch hands on, on the yarn there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Illuminati strength yarn. Yeah. And Homer just says, I think even Dredrick Tatum's in there, which is cool. I think he says it's a Tatum. He goes, we're going to find this turtle, but damn it, we've found love along the way. And I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> Real conspiracy is the friends you make along the way. Yeah. Yeah. And also playing Dredrick Tatum in this episode is Jay Farrow. Um, I was thinking he was different. Yeah. So I show of- Mel different as well. Seemed different to me. I don't think so. He's a Dan Castellaneta voice, right? That's what I thought. I thought that would be odd to recast that. But yeah, it just didn't quite sound on to me. Maybe it just wasn't. Ever- yeah. Not Dan had pointed this out to me before I watched the episode. He says, some, I think some of these voices are different. And yeah, some certainly did. Was I looking away or did I have my fingers in my ears for a second? Because I saw Joe Montaigne's name in the credits. But I don't remember any Fat Tony. And I don't. <laughs> There is a single, oh, when they announce that they're replacing Christopher Columbus Day, which is apparently a huge issue for Italian-Americans. Uh, yeah, yeah, in the very, very first scene. That's right, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. okay, then that's great. Yeah, anytime Christopher Columbus Day comes up, there's always this screen cap from The Sopranos with, I think it's uh, Stevie Van Zandt saying, it's anti-Italian discrimination is what it is, <laughs> which always cracks me up. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean... Good on Joe Mantegna for getting a paycheck for what has yeah. got to be his shortest guest appearance in the season. Hey, come on. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> he loves doing the show, then. He's always said, because yeah. when we spoke to him, he was like, whenever that character is on screen, unless it's impossible for me to record it, I want to be the guy to do it. I think he's only mm. missed it maybe twice. Yeah, and there was even one episode where, like, all we basically did was make choking sounds when Homer was, like, putting a plastic bag on his head. Oh, okay. And we were surprised. Oh, yeah, he's in that episode. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, uh, with Simpsons, you know, we like to dissect it a bit, and what we've sort of uh, like to talk about is kind of the two pillars which hold Simpsons together is, you know, the wackiness and the heart. You know, uh, it's an animated show by its nature, has some wackiness to it, but great Simpsons has always been able to balance that with the heart. But first of all, how was the wackiness in this episode? How did... Like the cartoony moments land with you all. I was there many really overly wacky moments in this episode. I didn't. I couldn't really. That that's the one thing I usually look out for when I watch the new HD ones. I'm like, oh, where's it going to be? Just too absurd. Mm. Not much of this was too absurd for me. Can you like? Can you remind me of any? Yeah, laughing rhinos. I I did like the rhinos yes. laughing yeah, joke. Yeah, there was nothing that just seemed like over the top ridiculous wackiness to me. Yeah, Chalmers singing was a bit weird, and uh, Homer performing the ceremony didn't make a lot of sense either, but that's not impossible wacky, it's just, you know, unlikely. What were your your thoughts, guys, on the animation of Homer getting his head rubbed? I hated it so much, (laughs) and I wanted to throw up. That was an immediate and visceral reaction. That was yep. weird, yeah. I was. Uh, I mean, it's, it's how it, I guess it usually looks when you got a lot of loose skin up there, but it was just, go, <laughs> guy, guy, go get Louise to rub your head. Go get Louise to rub your head. For everyone playing at home, there are now two bald men trying to scrunch their heads in a similar fashion. It is nowhere near as chaotically awful. It's I didn't know where that question fun. was going to land, and that's yeah. where it did. I'm glad That's for where it. it did, and I'm here to describe it for all of you. Personally, didn't mind that. I, I mean, BT said you had a visceral reaction. I sort of, I too had a visceral reaction. I was like, that looks nice. 
It does look relaxing. Look, the massage itself, sure, but the 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 folding of the many layers of skin. Blah. <laughs> well, I recommend Where's it. This always love. I, I love a good head massage. Well, look, I'm, again, I'm sure it's great. The visual is horrifying. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah she's really getting in deep there. Because like, you have I to mean... remember, any bunching of skin means it's coming from somewhere else, and Homer's head is relatively smooth, so somehow there is skin being pulled from one part of his body to compact in a different part of his body, and it's awful. As the designated older person <laughs> on this Zoom conversation, it's the opposite of Archie Bell the Drells. You loosen up. <laughs> as you get a bit older, so, it's, uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it's not necessarily uh, you're not you're not going super tight or anything like that. It's just like got a bit of flexibility. Maybe it's just my android heart that finds you flesh bags just disgusting, but still. <laughs> uh, yeah, it certainly was a visual. I, I think. Um, yeah, it's going to get some diverse opinions about it. You've got your episode image, that much is sure. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm going to make a note of that, actually. Yeah, those oh, are God, so I was kidding. Pick. What have I done? Um, but no, you're right, Dando. This isn't a particularly wacky episode of The Simpsons. Like Surprisingly. The, wa- the wackiness is all about in their ideas and the conspiracies and stuff, mm. which is good that like the actual solution wasn't that wacky in the end. Yeah. Yeah, setting it up so far that the tortoise went down a literal rabbit hole was, I don't know. Oh, it's done purely for the joke. You get it, you yeah. Because yeah. that looked like a big ass tortoise, and that looked like a small ass <laughs> rabbit hole. So yeah. you know. I had to make some renovations, knock this up wall here all through. Yeah, I got to say though, when I when I first saw Slow Leonard, or you know the uh, at least the uh, the Slow Leonard enclosure, my mind and and heart uh, left to my favourite uh, real life tortoise, Jonathan. I don't know if you're familiar with Jonathan the turtle or Jonathan the tortoise. Is he like the 180 year old? May, may, I, may I swear on this podcast? Is that Absol- right? Absolutely. fucking loop. Fucking yeah. Motherfucker was born in the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> old tortoise. Yeah. So um, he outlived the queen. <laughs> take that. And he's still going. So uh, yeah, my imagination. Oh, I think they might be paying tribute to Jonathan Tortoise. Nice one. Um, yeah, but in terms of the wackiness and in terms of the conspiracy theories, yeah, it never really mm. sort of went too far down the metaphorical yeah. rabbit hole. I mean, there was a lot of talk about border. There was a lot of talk about the red thread and all that kind of business. But I mean, compared yeah. to real life conspiracy theories, uh, you know, these guys were relatively, I don't know, middleweights. At least they kept it to themselves. Oh, I suppose at the end they are going to like torture house and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. at least they didn't bring a gun to a pizza place and That's demand true. to yeah. release yeah. the children. Yeah. Like, you've got mm. to save the children from pizza pedos. Oh, good yeah. Lord. I um I watched this episode twice, and the first time I watched it, I didn't really pick up on the conspiracy theory sort of plants I'm putting throughout the episode mm. that these guys are going to eventually lose their minds and lose control of the situation. But it, it's from the very first scene, the scene that in which I um that I said was my favorite when Gil proposes to Miss Hoover. He actually says to her, "Will you make me the happiest man on this flat earth?" And I was like, oh, "Yeah." From the very beginning, mm. they yeah. you know, oh, yeah. and and the whack job sense was just normal to them. You know, mm. uh, it's it's funny when you watch docos about people who are very into conspiracy theories. I mean, mm. flat earthers, for instance. I mean, I remember watching some doco on Netflix a while back about yeah, people who are convinced the Earth is flat, and they don't seem insane, <laughs> or they don't seem completely deluded. It's like you know, you'd probably be having a very nice you know. Oh, meet Roger. You know he's uh, you know he sells insurance, and you know he likes footy on the weekends. It's like yeah, you get to talking with him, and you have a nice convo. And it's like, yeah, but the thing about the Earth being flat is, and you're like, excuse me. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> I've told this story on our show before, where we one time had this guy come over to fix our washing machine, mm-hmm. just like a local guy. I was like, oh, so I found him in like the classifieds. I was like, hey, cool, whatever. He come over, do it cheap, and he was going on and on. And on. He seems like a, like he's a really nice guy. And then Nicola came home. He goes, oh, you're English. Do you drink the blood of kids too? I went. I think he went. Uh, it's a vampire. No, and he goes, "Oh yeah, like the the queen, that the, the lizard people, the royal family, the lizard people." I was like, "Oh no, this man's in my house." Oh. And, he was, and he started going about how the moon was a prison, and the dark side of the moon is where the the prison is. And I was like, "Oh no, how do I get rid of this guy?" But eventually, we just sort of, it's like you got to agree with them, but not consent and want to know more. Eventually, yeah. sort of shuffled him yeah. out the door. But oh, that's interesting. Yeah, he dropped that lizard line. Yeah, like, that's... Oh no, he's he's in the house. He's in oh, the he knows what the inside of my house looks like. Oh no, yeah. 
man, that is all so much wackier than the shit that Sideshow Mel and <laughs> Dredrick were purporting. Like, yeah, yeah, that is next level. One second, guys, let's get the head out. My son just come in the room. One second, sorry. We yeah, really- no worries. Also, there's a cat or a dog. That's a dog. His son, who's also named Elliot. Say, say hi. hi. Hello. Hello. Say, say my name's Elliot. My name's Elliot. That's my name. I was about to say Elliot. You said your name. Did you pinch? Did you pinch my name? All right. Say bye bye. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Bye, mate. (laughs) Bye, Elliot. 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 (laughs) He's got a lifetime ahead of Smell Elliot. So. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the life of Four Finger Discount, mate. (laughs) What were we talking about? Sorry. Yeah, like I said, the other thing we like to talk about is the heart. How was the heart with this episode? You know, oh, we've lost Beach. We'll we'll just roll on. That's fine. <laughs> I'm not we talking about that mushy stuff. <laughs> he, he's a cold, unfeeling robot. He he doesn't mind missing this segment. Um, but yeah, we've talked a bit about um, Gill and Miss Hoover. But what about the overall heart with Homer and this new group of friends? How did this land with you all? Oh, I liked how Homer had created this group, as I said. He didn't really intend to create it, but once he created it, he felt a sense of worth mm. and that's what he didn't want to let go. It was also a sense of, he didn't want to let go of feeling like he'd achieved something by creating this group. He didn't want to reveal the secret of the tortoise that he'd found it because he, he could see what the group had done for all the other people as well. You know, Gil and Mr. had found love and you know, comic guy who's u- usually a snarky, miserable person. He's happy. He's excited, but it wasn't until Marge sort of points out these guys are, out of control you need to tell them the truth they're going to burn down the house and stuff that's when he comes clean but still by the end they're able to sort of find a common ground where there can still be conspiracy nuts but on a more tame level and i, I liked that aspect that they've, they've he's created this little community that they can enjoy amongst themselves yeah without resorting to straight justice and yeah, mob mentality exactly. yeah. yeah yeah the threads that combined them yeah, it, it wasn't just slow lemon i mean was there yeah combined or yeah belief in sort of there's something going on where everything is under control, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, that there was a, a nice chemistry between this group, between this very sort of disparate group of individuals that you wouldn't necessarily think to put in the same room. Now, whether it was just written that way or – I mean, I think that the tone of the performances had a lot to do with that as well. I mean, I'm not necessarily, you know, waving a little charmer's flag all the time, but I, I was really quite taken with his uh, his presence here. I thought that was great. Even the, I thought the singing was lovely. Oh, re- oh, that song was so cringe to me. It <laughs> <laughs> oh, came out you what so is it? slow It's a, it's a so, riff on yeah. um, the old Sam Cooke song. What is it? Um, it's Wonderful World. It's a wonderful, wonderful world. But, yeah, rewritten with conspiracy theory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, an interesting take on it indeed. But yeah, also the other big thing we like to discuss, uh, did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Are these uh, reminding you of the characters we know and love from the 90s? Uh, like, is the show feeling like itself? How, how's the integrity on this episode? It didn't, it didn't. As I touched on earlier, it felt very much more closer when it comes to the Homer character, very much closer to the Homer from the 90s era than, say, the post-film era. What, what would we say, the, the 20s, the seasons, the 20s? The 10s? Even, even like the... the end. Even yeah. <laughs> like, really from, like, season 15 onwards, he's really become a horrible person in many mm. episodes, hasn't he, Guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, certainly. Yeah, there are aspects when you go, oh, no, this is not the guy that I uh, relate to or empathise with. I mean, yeah, this is just a clod. Especially when you watch episodes like Colonel Homer and you go, this, this, this is the guy we love. And then you watch things like, what do we watch, Codependence Day, and you go, What? Oof, yeah. Yeah. There's only episode. been two episodes that made me furious, and it was Codependence Day, and it was what was the one we did not long ago. I was so angry. Was that on a clear day? I can't see my sister. Yes. Oh yeah, my I know you're out there. Yeah. That God, that made me angry. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even Homer being a jerk in that one. It was just the. the oh, don't want to talk. I don't want to get into it. The logic. <laughs> <laughs> they warped physical time and space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and our reviews on that one, those ones, we were similarly low. Um, yeah, the, like in terms of the integrity, it's always going to be a weird step, especially yeah for people of, of our age and our look, like having the simpsons like directly referencing social media stuff absolutely like, yeah and especially it's not- tiktok that one took me back i was like oh okay yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah we're, fair, we're in been- 2022 now folks yeah absolutely yeah and at times it does sort of feel like they are like shoehorning in the lingo and like going on about yeah, the tiktoks and the face looks and the internet randos and stuff like that but to be fair yeah the simpsons does have a tricky balance to take where obviously if they're going to comment on society that's going to be part of it is social media but sort of trying to get around the language of that one yeah it's a bit of a challenge 
Yeah, but I, I just because we're chatting to um to Matt Salmon in a couple of weeks or this week actually. Oh, cool. And I was going to ask him one of the questions I'm going to ask him is when do you decide that the Simpsons are going to upgrade their media? Like, wh- where does it come mm. to the point where we have to go? Right, we're using this type of phone now, and we're using this social media because. I know they mentioned face look in this, but it's like, I oh, know we're, we're, we're done with people still use that thing. Now they're all about TikTok. It was like, well, what point do you think I have to get to where they go, right? Now we're making that shift. Like, what do yeah. you guys Oh, uh, if the Simpsons television isn't a big back one, it is destroying the integrity of the show. <laughs> it is not my Simpsons. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember seeing that first HD opening intro of the, the flat TV and I went, oh, mm. no, I don't like this at all. <laughs> I remember no. for a while there, that, for when they first did that, occasionally the tv would fall off the tv yeah I, that's right i would get anxiety for that i was like is it gonna fall <laughs> nah it didn't fall off okay that one actually bugged me because then you'd see the red white yellow cables and it's like uh-huh by that point we'd had hdmi uh, update simpsons they can't win with snarky fans like me exactly yeah well that's a good point I, I i'm usually like that as well i'm a stickler for little details but yeah yeah <laughs> i am um, but when i watched this though i went into it going all right i have to watch this not comparing it even though that's what we're going to be we've been doing yeah don't compare it to the golden era just watch this like a 22 minute piece of television and is it enjoyable mm. and it was i really enjoyed this episode it's really tough to to put down the baggage you've been carrying for a very long time when it comes to a show absolutely. like this show. Yeah. so there's going to be a period of adjustment absolutely but uh like dennis i mean i was reminded of funnily enough this is a stretch but bear with me when I went to see, the, um, was it Rise of Skywalker, the last Star yeah. Wars movie in the most recent trilogy? Yeah. I was watching, going, oh, this is a bit, oh, that's a bit naff and that's a bit cheesy. And then realized, wait a minute, think back to, you know, 77 or 83. Star Wars has always been like a goofy space soap opera. Really. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, view this through that. I mean, you know, if you want new badass Star Wars for, you know, 50 something guy, Go watch Andor. That's great. But, you know, this is <laughs> you know, this is Star Wars for kids. Just enjoy it that way. And uh, so kids, it's, it's, it's BT. It's, 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 <laughs> BT's back, back y'all. <laughs> BT's back. All right. Um, <laughs> you just have to adjust your mindset. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, it takes a little bit of doing. But look, this struck me as a, a perfectly, and I say this a bit about episodes that we're currently reviewing on, on Four Finger Discount, a perfectly good sitcom episode. Yeah, revolving sure. around how easy it is to fall down the conspiracy theory rabbit hole and how certain people are more susceptible to that because maybe they're not that bright or maybe they don't have a whole lot going on in their lives or maybe they're thirsty or hungry for connection. And, yeah. you know, and I think this episode did a really good job of depicting that. Yeah, conspiracy is much like any addiction. It's fulfilling a need in your life that you're not getting elsewhere. So it's uh, basically that. And it's yeah. nice that they folded the social media aspect into that as well. I mean, that whole, you know, the hearts and likes and smiley faces that uh, are sort of enveloping Homer when he when he realizes, wait a minute, people aren't laughing at me. They're really on my side about this. I mean, that dopamine hit is real when you start getting when you if you you know make a tweet or a Facebook post or something that starts racking up likes. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> yeah, inject that social media approval into my veins. <laughs> <laughs> Um, at BT, we were just asking the feel question. Uh, how was the integrity for you? Well, again, this is kind of one that surprised me. I expected, especially when we start with, you know, Quimby being like, ah, we're going to stop having Columbus Day. And it's like, oh, okay, it's one of these, you know, uh, the liberals ones. But surprisingly, it was not. And uh, yeah, Homer's sense of worth that he's getting something from this group is really, they could have sat in that a little bit longer. Um, my biggest complaint in this one is going to be rather the economics of it. But uh, the idea is there that you know that he's getting something in this group, that he's getting the attention, that he's finding a community. Basically, that's mm. really good, and I think that carries throughout. So that's really the source of all the heart in all of this. All right, but yes or no? Would you guys watch this one again? I would. I've watched it twice already. I would watch it a third time. <laughs> I, 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 check I, it out. I really just in particular enjoyed the Gil and Miss Hoover aspect. I just mm. I, I thought it was really nice. Yeah. Yes, give us more Goover. <laughs> <laughs> Goover, yeah, go with that. Not Gilva. It's fun to say. <laughs> Goof. <Goofy. laughs> um, and episodes we want to watch again, we like to think about what Simpsons playlist we'd put this in. So, like, what are some other Simpsons episodes that remind you of this one? Conspiracy. Uh, go back so... to that Springfield murder mysteries videotape that I used to have in the 90s. What episodes were on there? Mm. I'm going to say The Island. Oh, sure. Yes, yep. The Island. That's, it's all about Homer getting into conspiracies. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember that one. What's that one? 
I, so I, where I, when I Homer Smith grew up? It wasn't called, wasn't called yeah. the island. I know what you're talking about now. Okay, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just couldn't remember the actual... Uh, what is it? The Computer War Menace, Menace shoes. shoes. Yeah, could be, yeah. yeah, that one, yeah. The last the last six minutes was just like a um as an ad for that old... Was it The Punisher? What, what the TV? Prisoner, yeah. Prisoner, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we should have a version episode. of The Punisher. <laughs> what, what about like when um Black Widow was Bart's trying to solve the case of who's trying to kill Selma? No, a lot of Sideshow Bob episodes would certainly fit the bill. What about Springfield Files? Because you got the mystery about the alien. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. And everyone thinking Homer's a nutter yeah. or a dumb and yeah. The bit that. of who shot Mr. Burns, why not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, probably oh. the best one of all, of course. Yeah. One of my <laughs> favorite episodes. Yeah. I reckon that would work perfectly fine. What, what, how long is your playlist? Just like because the old tapes used to be four. However long it needs to be. Four, four yeah, episodes. we're not yeah. we're not restricted by VHSs and their stupid oh, okay, nine then. minute limit anymore. Did you see my tweet recently though that I wish that they would let you they'd put like a randomizer on Disney Plus. A hundred percent agree with you. Yeah, it would be the greatest thing. Just, you know, a mini marathon, just 10 episodes randomly picked and you can choose which seasons they're from. Bam, enjoy your fucking night. That's good. Oh. Disney Plus needs to, uh, you know, take up what Netflix is putting down. You know, that, they've got their thing. Yeah. Spread. Surprise me. Yeah, as long as it's just from The Simpsons and, and you can pick which season because there's nothing beats that thrill of, you see The Simpsons coming up on TV at 6 p.m. back in the day, but you didn't know what episode it was yet. Yeah. No, absolutely. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, there's the circus intro. This could be this, 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 this. A circus <laughs> intro, I believe, was And Maggie Makes Three. Is that right? Mm. Or Lisa's Word. No, Lisa's First Word, I think, it was the first time they used that. Oh, there we go. Sorry, uh, no, but yeah, but they've. To bring it back to the heart, real quick, just with a quote I noticed I wrote down was, uh, These friendless weirdos have become my best weird friends. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh. nice, man. Yeah, it was very nice. Yeah. Well, if you're talking about nice, then you've got to, you can't go past, mmm, that's good squid. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely CBG with his heart for the calamari. But yeah, we like to think about the episodes and pick them apart a little bit. Uh, so, BT, what would you like to change about this one? It just needs a few more run throughs. It just needs a bit more economy. That fuck you beginning is a little too much to make Homer feel stupid. It's just, I mean, it's no, you know, they called you slow. Uh, it's a little bit yeah. too much to be like, what if we all had a big library? You're in a library. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. It's not that it's bad. It's just not efficient. It's not as good as it could or should be, I feel. And that kind of speaks for a few other parts that don't quite work for me. There are just some points that slows down. But yeah, that said, most of this structurally is fine. It's just, yeah, needs a bit of a smoothing over, a bit of a sanding. What about you, Guy? What would you like to change? I, I agree with BT in that respect. Yeah, look, it, it doesn't feel like a first draft script, mm. but it, it could do with a, a little bit of tightening, a little bit of punching up on some of the, uh, some of the gag lines. What's mm. that, mate? Sorry. Tighten up them dogs. It's a very weird internal reference to this show. At which we pulled from a very weird <laughs> yeah. episode of The Simpsons. Yep. Uh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate uh, you sharing your arcane lingo with me. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, just to tighten up some of the gags and things like that. This is more um, a my problem than the show's problem. But getting used to some of the new voices, as I said, from established cast members and sort of new, and new cast members, like this isn't your grandfather Simpsons, and well, I'm your grandfather. No, <laughs> but that took a little getting used to. But that's again, hmm. as I said, my problem. Look, a, a solid structure hmm. for the episode. Humor, yeah, maybe a six. Heart, maybe an eight. So that's good. Yeah. How about you, Dando? My first thought was that they could have picked something a little more exciting than a, an old tortoise mm. as, as sure. like a mystery. But then you've got the aspect of the reason Homer loves him so much is because you saw him when he yeah. was a little kid. And what fucking yeah. is as long as a tortoise? And I think there's that idea of uh, it being mundane launching the excitement. Is that kind of the idea? Yeah, I mm. guess so. I think it was also one of those, like, making sure they could get that tortoise and hair gag in to work. I don't know. <laughs> Shit. I don't know. I just thought, I, and, and and I get you, you sort of stole my thing, BT, with the with the opening. <laughs> I thought with um, not necessarily it was that it was cruel. I just thought it was a little too dumb. Maybe that Homer was suggesting a library whilst he was in a library. I was like, mm. Oh. Mm. I must admit, when he was saying, you know, why don't we take all these little because they are springing up all over the place mm. in the libraries. Like, why don't we take all those books and put them into one big thing? It's like, well, they are defunding libraries and closing them left yeah. and right. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Of course, then they show that he's in a library and do so. Um, yeah. but like, hey, I'm actually, not a bad idea. Good for you for showing some civic pride. Mm. Oh, wait a minute, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, forgive me, I'm not up to speed with uh, sort of more recent episodes, but that guy who's um, that sleazy. The academic looking guy that Mo says we've got to hang out more. Yeah, his uh, <laughs> classical art is nothing without the erotic. Erotic. Yeah, so I think this is the first appearance for this guy. Um, Hopefully not the last. I take back what I was saying about liking change in the show. I don't like this, dude. <laughs> I, I love being a learned pervert, so, you know, <laughs> I'm... 
give, give me some more of that too. I watched it and I was like, Guy will love this man. <laughs> Each terror, I suppose. Um, mm. The th- main thing I'd like, uh, just talking about the changes, I think there was something really artistically cool about the way that Homer was seeing the uh, like superimposed likes and emojis mm. and stuff as he was getting into that. I do it like where the episode goes, but I hate that it kind of drops that as a idea and as a concept, as an artistic thing as well, because I think there is a potential storyline to mine from there about, yeah, people getting into their own internet bubbles and sort mm. of getting isolated from the real world chambers. people. Yeah. And just sort of as an artistic interpretation of how, yeah, the dopamine hits of getting the likes and emojis and people agreeing with you online. I thought that was really well done. I just think it's a shame they dropped it. Don't hate where it went with the friends group and stuff, but yeah, I kind of wish that concept was a bit more explored. Um, I'm going to say just the the final bit where I think it's Illuminati thread or whatever, but that uh, that company or that evil conglomerate or whatever organization, just that keep defunding schools, America. I mean, that felt sort of vintage Simpsons to me in some way. I mean, that's uh, you know poking fun at yes. America being its own worst enemy in a lot of ways. That, yeah. that felt sort of old school to me, and I, I, I mean it. it it felt a little obvious, but at the same time, I don't know. I appreciated the effort, shall we say. No, I mean, it was a clever way to end. Who stands most to benefit from conspiracy nutters? Of course, Big Yarn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they told us from the start, it's Illuminati Street. Yeah. And never let the truth get in the way of a big yarn. Yeah. <laughs> We're through the looking glass here, people. <laughs> uh, did anyone have any other notes about this episode they wanted to mention before we get into the rankings? No, it was just a surprising, delightful start to the season. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd be very happy to get on one of those um, booze trolleys that had a guac trough in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> have any of you ever done that booze uh, tram trolley thing, booze bike thing? They just seem like a death trap. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my brother and his mates rode around one in Amsterdam, and it's a weird thing where, like, between the constant spilling of the beer because you're on a mm. giant moving vehicle together and all the pe- pedaling, despite the fact that you nail a liter of beer, you don't get that drunk. Like, is it like <laughs> is it is it unlimited beer? There, so you pay for a certain amount. If you spill it, it's your cost. Is that how it works? No, no, it's just a set price for the thing, mm. and yeah, unlimited beer. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think the stuff that's spilling is going into a trough. That's yeah, going back into the head. <laughs> that's going back into you. So mm. yeah. I really liked the koala sticker gag here. That uh, just t- was so funny to me how it immediately falls off. Yeah. Uh, what about I'm the, like- um, how scary it is in this, cl- you know how scary it is to be in this climate as a dumb white man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we- poor Homer. I've only got, well, I've got a bunch, but I'm only going to pick two. Uh, one is when Bart sees uh, Homer at home. He's like, hey, Dad's not at Moe's. What's wrong? Is Moe all right? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a not Lenny moment. Um, and also Homer's line of uh, truth is just a hunch you're willing to die for, which is what the truth has become these days. Anywho, moving on. Yeah. Uh, um, and yeah, I liked that they highlighted the very real conspiracy that Bezos is staying alive using turtle blood. Uh, anyway. It's time to rank this thing. On the Simpsons Index, we rank using a six-point scale which starts down the bottom at failure. Maybe if the episode was just meh, you give it participant. But for positive rankings, you got OK Bronze, Good Silver, Excellent Gold. But for the best of the very best, the episodes which the Simpsons could not exist without, we have the big rank of Cubic Zirconia. I'm going to go first. Let me show you how it's done. Ugh, I'm really skirting between a bronze and a silver here because my another big complaint in this one, I don't think there's enough jokes. Mm. Um, it really doesn't hold me up like that. But the story do they really need good. do they need to have jokes to be a good episode? <laughs> it is a sitcom. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> we've got. I, the I like sit. the situation. <laughs> uh, uh, I think I'm going to go down to bronze, but like only just. It's sort of existing on that border for me. How about you, BT? Wow, you sound like me. I was going to say bronze. Uh, yeah, it just needs a little bit more smoothing over. A few more jokes would have really helped. And uh, I realize this is more of a heart one, but again, a better structure is going to lead make that heart feel more impactful. Dando? I think I just, I would look for different things in an episode. Mm. I would lean more towards a silver, personally. Yep. I enjoyed this a lot more than what I was expecting to. And I'll give it that. Yeah, like, yeah that's what I say. With season 34, they've... They found somewhat of a groove, and um, yeah, I, 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 I would give this a silver. That's what I'm heading towards, anyway. Awesome, and guy, finish it off, please. Zinc, zinc, zinc. No, <laughs> come back, uh, zinc. No, uh, look, I've never met a bandwagon that I didn't want to jump on. I'm going to say bronze with you guys. <laughs> All right. Well, that will equal a shiny bronze, and I do like that overall ranking for it. That mm. uh, feels right. 
uh, even if the dandos might disagree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to review Colonel Homer. We'll be back. And we are back and we just watched Season 3, Episode 20, Colonel Homer. First released in March of 1992. Fun fact, the writer of the previous episode is younger than this episode. Um, (laughs) uh, This was directed by Mark Kirkland, written by Matt Groening. Oh, wow. His first and only solo credit for the series. He's got some co-writing credits on other episodes, but yeah, this is his uh, solo one. Anyway, in this episode, you know it. It's Colonel Homer. It's Lurleen Lumpkin. Hey, Mm -hmm. what do we think? Love this episode. Love, 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 love. It's a good episode. I was raised on country music, and really, I got yeah. I I didn't I didn't like country music, but my dad oh. loved country music, so I had to listen to it all the time. It was either country music or meatloaf, and I like meatloaf. Yep. Are you serious? Oh my god, those are like my dad's two favorite genres: country music and meatloaf. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Meatloaf. Bad out of hell was just on repeat in the car. Hundred percent same. We got some trauma to discuss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As was country music, and I was just never really. I was like. It's always about so such sad stuff. I don't why you what, how can you find enjoyment out of this? So as a as a result as a kid, I didn't like this episode because I'm like, ah, country music. I don't want to watch country music. <laughs> Get country out of my Simpsons. Exactly. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just imagining Dando's dad saying, better them than me. <laughs> <laughs> but then I got older and rewatched mm-hmm. it. And there were so many reasons I enjoyed this. A because it took me back to being a kid. And I was like, oh yeah, country music wasn't that bad. And it just reminded me of being at home with my parents and just being a kid. And I was like, oh, okay. Mm. So I had that nostalgic love for this episode. But also it gave me a reason to watch The Simpsons with my dad. Because I remember I chucked mm. this on. When I say I was old, I mean like you know, 12, 13, 14. I chucked it on for dad. And dad's like, he never really enjoyed The Simpsons that much. But he really enjoyed this one. And, I was, and as a result, yeah. we started watching The Simpsons together every morning on Fox 8. So this episode sort of bridged that gap between my my dad watching the show and not watching the show. But mm. then as I watched it when I was married, watching it for this review, obviously the Homer Marge story, yeah. it's heartbreaking it's and just lovely all in one. It's just, it's, I don't know whether the Simpsons are any more real than they are in their relationship is any more real than it is in this episode. Oh, for real. How about you, Guy? Well, yeah, I just found it incredibly uh, touching and heartwarming, but also, yeah, very, very, very funny. I mean, one of the things I enjoy most about The Simpsons are just little throwaway gags, you know, yeah. whether it's um, – I think I got most of the laugh out of the Flaming Pete's thing. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> that, that, re- that repeating gag. But even something just as little as, you know, at the very end when Homer's like, oh, no, I can't be part of Lulene's life anymore, I'm going to sell out to this, mm. you know, dreadful record company suit. Um, <laughs> just the the really sleazy smile that that guy gives when he, you know, like, I'll give you 50 bucks, sold. You know, and then just yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> oh. The Simpsons does that so often, and I just enjoy it every single time. You're right about the, um, we keep saying heart a lot, but yeah, that's that's exactly what oh. this episode is abundant in. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So um, that's something that just really, really touched me. And when you've got a good combination of the two, mm. as this episode does, yeah, well, you, yeah, you got a winner. Yeah, got a lot more kind of subtle jokes in this one because I like how that guy's from Yell, Rebel Yell Records, a subsidiary, uh, was it a division <laughs> of Tokusaka Club? Yeah. Right. And it's something that really stuck me that they don't have those little tiny digs at things anymore. It's much more plain and obvious. Uh, and just a lot about yeah. this episode strikes me as something they wouldn't really do. Like having, well, an emotional core episode is not uncommon, but one with this much music they'd have to pay for. They don't, they've been steering away from the music production for a long time. And uh, yeah, it's just something very vintage about this one. How great yeah. was Beverly as Lurleen? Oh my God. Fucking, Fucking amazing. Incredible. Every song I'm like, fuck, this is really good. I couldn't believe she, when I was writing the book, I couldn't believe that she wrote some of the songs. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's madness. No, it blew my mind. Yeah, in with Jeff Martin as well, who's the Simpsons writer, yeah. not to be confused with the lead singer of the Tea Party. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Beverly D'Angelo, what'd she write? She wrote No One Understands You, But I Do, and... Bag uh, of Homer. Oh, right, yeah. yeah Bag of Homer is really good as well. It's my yeah, it's favorite. I, I think, I think yeah, I, these songs were incredibly catchy, weren't they? I think the last song, I just really... Uh, every song's great in this. Every song's mm-hmm. great. But I, re- I really enjoy the last one just i guess mm. because of the way it ties into the story and it's like oh, oh you got me i'm crying it's just i don't know i really 
thought that last oh, yeah. song was very sweet. Goosebumps entirely. It was, oh, 100%. Was yeah. I literally, no, I honestly no. teared up watching it. It was fantastic. Mm. But not only just the actual singing of the song, but when she was talking about some of the other ones that she's written, I yeah. can't stop laughing. <laughs> don't, look, don't look up my dress unless you mean it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Basting a turkey with my tears. Don't look at my dress unless you mean it. I'm sick of your lying lips and false teeth. False teeth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Can you imagine the high fives in the writer's room when they were oh, coming yeah. up with that stuff? You know what's awesome too is when they're in the recording studio, just the little details of like the, the cracks in the wall mm. and the soundproofing falling off the wall. Just mm, little yeah. things like that. Like it's this, this old studio. I just thought just all the little details, they all add up. They're, they're really awesome. Yeah, yeah. Or when um, I think Homer's, is it Spittle County? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's driving in and the, the banjo kid from Deliverance yeah. is sitting on the, uh, <laughs> sitting on the porch. <laughs> Well, nothing bad will come of that. <laughs> but I didn't actually remember or realise maybe that until doing the research for this episode that, yeah, Beverly D'Angelo got the job from her portrayal of Patsy Cline in the, the movie The Coal Miner's Daughter, which is about Loretta Lynn, who, yeah, coincidentally, we lost at the start of the month. She was, yeah, mm. 90 years old. Mm. Um, Loretta and- Lynn, one of my favourite guests on The Muppet Show. <laughs> I'm glad we've had this many Muppet Show references. Feel free to do more. This is delightful. (laughs) But no, she's an absolute powerhouse of a performer. And yeah, that movie's wonderful. And yeah, rest in power, Loretta Lynn. Um, But it was surprising to me that, yeah, because often The Simpsons will have, yeah, the guest voice actor and then they'll bring in a session musician to do the singing parts. And Mm. that it was her brought so much more authenticity to the role. Yeah, And I know that they had a particularly hard time like designing her. And I think like all the stressing and anxiety about it definitely paid off because she does kind of look a little otherworldly from the regular Simpsons cast. Mm. So yeah, she stands out in those ways. Like her cheeks are a little more plumpy than your average little Simpsons. Little lips, cast. yeah. Yeah, yeah, the little lips and the little ski run nose. Yeah. Looks like and, a person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird for the Simpsons world, yeah. but <laughs> um, so yeah, talking about those pillars again, how was the wackiness in this episode? Uh, Again, I, I, I wasn't I a huge fan of Homer changing color. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was funny, but it, 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 whenever someone changes color, it always upsets me. I'm always just like, I don't like this. Like, it makes me uncomfortable. How many times you have you held your breath next to an open sewer next 40 miles? Yeah, so, I know, right. What was that? Uh, a a sulfur pit or something? Man up, breathe in. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, the stinkiest highway in America. Absolutely. <laughs> Again, though, it wasn't an overly wacky episode. Again, no. Nah. Still an emotional core in a grounded world. So it was. It was based. It was, it was plenty of humor throughout, but it was based on the emotional side of the story. That's what the whole. That's what the core of this is. It's the emotional side. And Marge is just. It's almost like she is almost given up. That she's just a man's left me for a beautiful another beautiful woman, mm. which is so heartbreaking. But then when Homer walks in dressed as Colonel Homer, it's like, oh yes. <laughs> well, just that. I think just that reminiscence as well. You know, yeah, when so great. Lulene is saying. Yeah, basically offering herself up. And, you know, Homer's flashing back to just getting slapped in the face even from a kissing booth and doesn't get his dollar back. So, yeah. um, but then just the, the fourth one with, I'll love you for the rest of my life. I mean, I'm going to be like Dan over here. Just, no. <laughs> Got you in the hard guts. I did. I, I drove into town to see my girlfriend when she was finishing work. I'm like, I gotta go see her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just thought that was, uh, yeah, really lovely. But in terms of the wackiness, uh, to get back to what you were saying earlier, Elliot, I mean, the other thing that struck me as even vaguely wacky was, um, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting the name of the of the bar that uh, that Homer goes the to. Beer and brawl. The beer yeah. and brawl. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The fact that it just turns into an absolute fight club, you know, and poor yeah. old yodeling Zeke can't even get out. You know. Let's fight. Yeah. Them's fighting words. I didn't write that. All right. time fucking joke. Yeah. Fantastic joke. Yeah. The fact that it turns into the, just this uh, yeah, absolute uh, nightmare pit. But no, generally this was fairly straightforward, wasn't it? Mm. I yeah, think. No, absolutely. It's, yeah, I think it had to be when you had a story like this. Yeah. yeah particularly in the early years. Can't get years, too heightened. Yeah. No, they, they can't. It's, it's got to keep it ground and keep you believing this story that it could actually, Homer could actually be leaving. Because at, at this point, you don't know. He could be leaving Marge. You know he's not going to, but yeah. they're going to make you believe he's potentially going to leave her for Lurleene. But I'm, I'm I, I never got that. I never got that feeling. Like he's, no, I mean, I mean, I mean as, and as, not as just kid, because. As a kid, though, watching it, I. Oh, yeah. Well, it's more that, uh, again, this is really Golden Retriever Homer because he has no idea whatsoever. And right That's how up, it works. Right That's up to the point. You know, she sings Bunk with me tonight. It's like, wow, there wouldn't be a man alive, wouldn't be turned on with that. 
all right, goodbye. <laughs> and just doesn't even, and then she spells it out and he's yeah. all like, he's genuinely shocked. He's like, oh, I, I had no idea. <laughs> on the fourth repeat. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Apparently the staff were, were really down on it. They were saying, Homer's acting like a real dick in this. It's not very nice. And as Matt Grady was trying to say, no, he's oblivious. He's not yeah. meaning to do he's this. He's genuinely oblivious. Yeah. Well, that's, that yeah, I mean, it, it's why you've got those flashbacks where, you know, no one's getting any time for this guy in a romantic sense except the love of his life. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a good point because his obliviousness, because the one thing that sort of like, I don't know, run me the wrong way about this. And I think we touched on it before is that, yeah, Homer's behavior in the movie theater, I would be fucking furious at this dude. But yeah, if you're coming at it from the approach, yeah, he's just kind of a dumb dog. And then he got yelled at and then he's upset. Yeah. Like his sookiness is maybe a bit justified. I don't know. To be fair to Homer, and I... I've yelled at people who talk in movie theaters before, but to be oh, entirely I saw fair, us with you, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, to be entirely fair to Homer, no one tells him to shush until Marge yells at him. Mm. Like she doesn't say, "Homer, be quiet." First, she just goes from nothing to yelling, and so he has again. He's completely oblivious until he's being berated, and that's why he's so mad. So I kind of side with that. It's like you know, give him a nudge in the ribs first before you scream at him. It's just, it's just a shame that, uh, you know, he couldn't get into Look Who's Oinking. I'm pretty sure you know, <laughs> there would have been a receptive audience. He would have felt right at home. By the way, <laughs> I'm sorry. But, um, I don't know if it's Wise Guy or Wise Guy Voice who's oh. manning the uh, box office, but uh, yeah. let me guess, Look Who's Oinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, that's just reminded me as well. They haven't even gone for any wacky jokes with the movies. Like, mm. I mean, of course, the Stockholm what affair is purposefully static. But yeah, the horror movie that the kids are watching, that's really affecting just to switch the screen to all red and just, yeah. 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 Well, I'm pretty stuff. sure this is actually a repeat of a previous game. Ah, it was probably just a wallaby. I'm pretty sure it's that scene. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Space Mutants, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the one that they filmed here. That was very nice of them. <laughs> Terror Down Under. Yeah, talking about the wackiness, we just transitioned into the heart because that's what this episode this, yeah. is. So I'll skip right to, did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Are these characters we know and love? This is an episode of The Simpsons where if someone says they don't get or they don't want to watch The Simpsons, this is the kind of episode you show them. Yeah. Mm. It, it, leaves you, it, just le it leaves you ground. feeling something. You, you can't watch this episode and not be left moved. So mm. this is like a perfect candidate for, here's why I love The Simpsons, watch. Yeah, Absolutely. and it very much ushers you in with the show sort of not just its humor but its trademark humor and like this guy's kind of a dummy uh you know his wife is uh sensible and long suffering the kids are wiseacres you know that's all the stuff you sign up for all the stuff that gets you in the door and then all of a sudden you know oh emotional haymaker you know yeah. <laughs> um, oh i wasn't expecting that and but i'm i'm so glad you hit me you know it hit me and it felt like a kiss it was great <laughs> so um yeah i think dando's right i mean this is an example and there are there are plenty of examples of episodes throughout the series that do this, but this is a really good example of mm. what the show does best. Yeah, no, I was um this one kind of again with the, an adult's view, it is very different. So I was coming in thinking, okay, how much am I going to hate Homer in this one? And to be entirely fair, even though I just defended it earlier, um, having Marge scream at him to shut up, given how much jerk ass Homer I've watched over the years, sure this is in the past, but it was still kind of satisfying to see that. Uh, however, this was, I think the real one that hit me here is that when he comes back and it's like, you can't pass if you've never been tested. So the idea that there is that temptation there for him, yes, he's oblivious to the most part, but once it's spelled out, that's what kind of brings him home. Well, that's what means so much when he does come home. It's not that he never got it. It's that he got it and decided, made a decision. I just want to say, I'm very partial to episodes like this. Listeners of Four Finger Discount will know that I'm constantly going back to The Last Temptation of Homer. It's my yeah. favorite mm. episode. It is a masterfully written, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, there's that wonderful chemistry between Mindy and Homer, and you know, just as pivotal to the success of um, Colonel Homer as Beverly D'Angelo is, Michelle Pfeiffer is to mm. Last Temptation of Homer, and the fact that I mean, Homer seems more sort of hot to trot in that episode, like, oh yeah, this is a real kind of. Well, test of the marriage yeah, and the one big, that does pass bt you're right yeah. so uh well, i don't know difference. maybe i'm i'm just partial to that kind of episode but no, uh, he, was, he was in love with with mindy in that episode where here she was in love with him yeah, yeah there was nothing in return he had no idea whereas mindy he actually had fun talking to her and stuff yeah but yeah yeah it was, it was totally a non-sexual thing for him he's he just saw a talent and wanted to share yeah. her with the world and... even yeah has the line of i just wanted to share your beautiful songs with the world and i've done that now so i'm leaving and like, yeah, yeah. 
I apologize to all you listeners out there, by the way, they can hear screaming kids. My wife is trying her best to wrangle them for bedtime right now. So um, <laughs> you could have just blamed me. It would have been fine. <laughs> <laughs> and all your screaming children. I like screaming. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> That's just playing on your record player in the back there. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> You know, hit compilation of 50 screaming children. <laughs> um, it's a classic. Does anyone have anything they want to change about That's this what one? I call abuse. Anything we want to change it. Um, maybe the opening scene goes a little long at the cinema. Mm-hmm. I, don't, yeah, but I, sure. I, I liked this little venture out as a family. Yeah, mm. totally. And yeah, I love the compact car gag and everyone out the window. Like, <laughs> yeah. They get out the windows when they were that close to the other cars. Oh, who knows? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Don't think about logic. Yeah. <laughs> nits, taking nits. Um, I, I didn't mind that whole bit with the uh, the cinema and all that kind of stuff. I thought that went on just fine. I thought Homer's trip from I'm going out now and I don't yeah. want to be. I thought that went a bit long. The mm. bit between there and getting to the beer and brawl. I mean, the gags were fine. They weren't bad yeah. by any stretch. But it's like you've got one too many in here, perhaps. Yeah. Or yeah. you know, tighten up. Yeah, I, I agree. It did feel like, yeah, either pick the Flaming Pete's or the, the Stinky Highway stuff. But, like, yeah, it's not a huge complaint, though. Um, how about you, BT? Because um, I'm really, I'm looking over my notes and really trying to find something I want to change. I don't really have anything. Arguably, you could throw in a bit more Laugh Laugh, but that's not what the point of this. And there's still plenty of good mm. jokes in there. I don't really, I can't think of anything. So, Matt Grady should have more episodes. Yeah, yeah quite, I mean, why Yeah, not? that's what I'd like to change. Should have really given a shot to this show he invented. Mike Reese didn't <laughs> w- did not want to do this story. His big mm. nitpick with it was um that how does Homer have this second job if he's already got a job? You know, back when they were trying to keep continuity going. Yeah, and it was and, and the fact that Homer has a job didn't become a joke. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there are a few things that if you had more time, you could flesh out. Like Marge's instant suspicion of this woman is a bit much. I don't know. Um, if, if you had a, if you're, yeah, had a partner and all of a sudden he's hanging out with somebody else, it's just instinct to go, okay, hmm. Yeah, you go from hmm to don't ever see her again. Is just, it's a bit quick, but I get the economy of storytelling. They don't have time. You know, yeah, you know what it was. It was just the fact that we didn't see him. Yeah, going, yeah exactly. I'm not ha- I'm seeing the family alone. Yeah, enough. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think it was like more Marge seething at her because of how yeah outwardly affectionate she was. Yeah, yeah. Like there is a definite like line you can draw. Well, yeah, of course she's seen him, uh, seen her just run up and kiss him on the cheek, and then of course that would lead to grinding your teeth on the track. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the delivery of charmed. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's because she understands the subtle subtext of back me a Homer more than Homer does. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't want to mess with your format, fellows, but uh, the question for the for, for the for the group: Who are you in Yahoo? Which Yahoo <laughs> cast member are you? I'm oh, Rudy, big shirtless Bob. He's the only one I can remember. I can't remember any. <laughs> I am wearing a shirt, so. <laughs> whichever one got hit by a fence paling that's my yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. i like the question because it's like fuck the zodiac which member of yeehaw are you yeah <laughs> Yahoo or whatever it is. uh yeah and i gotta say i love how they go in alphabetical order and immediately, and immediately it's not start in. with a y yeah it's yeah little quick joke that i think i missed over the years fantastic and one other thing sorry i'm, I'm yeah yeah the record uh, studio recording studio guy was he a template for Disco Stew? He looked a bit Disco Stewish. Hmm. Oh, perhaps before he was Disco Stew, he was Country Kid. He was Country Stew. <laughs> Recording Stew, <laughs> Dio Stew. Recording Stew. Like, uh, I don't know. Country Stew sounds like a soup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> delicious yeah again i love the details of the recording studio yeah you can tell it's coming from people that have fucking been in these dingy little recording yeah. studios like i like the element that they still kept it a little crap like homer doing the first cd recording was done at one of those old mall kiosks yeah. Mm-hmm. and yeah for the high price of a quarter i don't know how she didn't make this happen before yeah mm-hmm. that's what i was thinking as well she just not <laughs> smart enough or just a lot of people living paycheck to paycheck, man. Just need a real smart manager like Homer. I think spending enough time at the beer and brawl and you know, sort of being exposed to that environment day in, day out, well, that's going to bring you down a little bit. I mean, just- it's in it's entirely implied that like not a single other person in that bar gives a crap about her song except Homer. And so it's just implied that she keeps doing this, but literally no one seems to care. And it's only when someone takes an interest that that opens up her entire dream. Yeah. And that causes her to fall in love with him and write songs about him. And then he runs away. It's also a little unrealistic, I guess, when you think think of all the guys in that bar, what, not one of them is attracted to Lurleen? 
<laughs> I think they're supplementing any sexual it. desire and just beating the shit out of each other. Yeah, true. Yeah, just hurling beer and pigs at poor Zeke. Um, <laughs> actually, just yeah, love that's... the delivery though of like, that's a song I wrote when I was uh, mopping up your dry blood and teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, even when they introduced Zeke, he was like, "All right, he's all healed up and ready for more." So here, yeah. here's yodeling Zeke. Zeke. <laughs> um, so of course we're gonna fucking watch this episode again. But what playlist would you put it in? What's a good Simpsons night with this one? Temptation. Yeah, yeah, Mindy episode, absolutely. Yeah. Mindy, I'll also put it in with um, Jacques. Yeah, as if he came to dinner. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Anything with Artie Ziff, yeah. No, oh, definitely. I am a bit of a fan of that um, one where Homer in the end goes and works on the oil rig. That Ziff one's really good. I, I enjoyed that uh, one. Yeah, I remember that one, yeah, yeah. Um, what about The Way We Was, How They Met? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, anything that reminds you of why these two are together. The first half of the Simpsons movie. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, after, he watches that, after he watches that video of Marge taping over the wedding tape, just shit. <laughs> <laughs> just yep. end um, it there. And you could also watch the sequel to this where Lurleen comes back with her dad to prove that our review no, of that don't. episode was right. Let me finish. <laughs> uh, to prove our episode, uh, review of that episode was right and it's a piece of flaming garbage. Really? <laughs> flaming awful. garbage? Awful. Do you I mean, like flame, episodes like, flaming? I, no, you know what? I misspoke. <laughs> flaming garbage at least provides light and heat. This was utterly pointless. This was frozen garbage. Oh, my. Yeah. This was room temperature garbage. Oh, useless. Left, left left regular left garbage. garbage. <laughs> I couldn't agree more that just, yeah, do not watch that episode. Save yourself the time. Like, do they have to I, know how right we are. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's probably coming up for you guys in, what, a year or two time? Yeah, yeah. Season eighteen, nineteen. Even the yeah. writers can see they were the worst era because they were double, double mm. like overworking themselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Does anyone else have any other notes about this episode with they want to mention before we rank it? Not in particular, I, I did have that uh, the director Mark Kirkland loved the emotion of the characters' faces in this episode. He thought they mm. felt very human and real, which I agree. No, absolutely. One doesn't want to bring logic into the uh, into the argument, <laughs> but. What Homer invested his life savings in Lulene and then took fifty bucks, so yeah. they're they're fucked financially. Yeah. Oh yeah. You were, you, we were just complaining about this in a recent episode where she, that you put the, the, another second mortgage on the Moe's Tavern and turned it into the the British bar, and then it just all of a sudden that's forgotten about. So mm-hmm. like, yeah, you put the life savings into Lulene and sold it off for fifty. Well, maybe the life savings was fifty bucks. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. That was a lot of singles he was holding. If that was the case, yeah, I did. I did like the Marge takes two to lie, one to lie, one to listen. What does that mean? <laughs> Moving on, places, <laughs> yep. places, people. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, a couple I'm going to blitz through as quickly as possible. Uh, Lurleen Lemkin. Wow, that's a pretty name, is it? No, I'm not sure. I forgot what it was. Um, Fourteen days without a tomato. Later on, it's two. <laughs> oh, I missed that. That's good. Look, good sign. Sign gags all the way through the Simpsons have always been good. Uh, there's, there's a very no quick... biting sign at the uh, the beer and brawl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a very quick reference that I missed every single time, except for this one when Lillian's like, "Oh, everyone's been calling," and she lists a bunch of uh, people from the Waltons because they would famously say goodnight to each other at the end. Oh, and the Waltons, of course, and the Simpsons were once compared to by George Bush. So there we go. Uh, it's mm. very quick. Honestly, not like a quote, but it just Homer seems to actually do a good job of this. So that's surprising. It's like dancing Homer. It's always good when Homer's good at something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah I'm absolutely. Leave it as my last note is uh, just that moment where he's like, before we negotiate, I need to tell you that I'm desperate to sell and will take any offer. <laughs> <laughs> just ruining it entirely. As much yeah. as I hate that man right now, you've got to love that suit. Yep. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, yeah, I loved the delivery of Beverly D'Angelo just going, you're just a big bag of sugar. Hey. Oh, you said you sugar, did say sugar, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so hey. good. Oh, And also the world's biggest hoagie. I was very yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Oh, yeah, playlist of things that Homer's boyhood dreams. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I I Gone show, down, I big hole, yeah. and yeah. Uh, my last actual note is going to be how innocent Homer is when, you know, Lonely is like, no one's ever been nice to me without wanting, you know, something in return. He's like, oh, well, I was going to ask you for a glass of water, but now I feel guilty. And that seems like, again, genuine emotions. Like, oh, I'm not going to ask now. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that everyone's notes? That's everyone's notes. Well, we must move to the rankings. But first, mm. the most important question we're going to ask you guys. we built to this. Uh, if you could have a sandwich named after you, what would be on that sandwich? What would be on the sandwich? Yeah. Yeah. What's or the in, if you're really, uh, you know. Well, if anyone who knows me, it's going to have double chicken. 
Everything I ate is double chicken. <laughs> did you want the double? Or did you want the double, double, double? <laughs> my favorite meal is chicken souvlaki with mm. double chicken. So my burger would have to be double chicken. Anyone who knows me and didn't expect double chicken just doesn't know me. Double chicken burger <laughs> souvlaki sounds good. Sure. <laughs> How about you, Guy? What's on the Guy? Um, I think you would have to have pesto, rocket, prosciutto, mm -hmm. roasted peppers, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a bit of eggplant, and definitely some artichoke hearts chopped up oh, and spread across that, the that's top. Artisan, yeah. Yeah. Um, or, that or just um, a burger with a shit ton of meat and cheese in it. <laughs> <laughs> so that time someone said just what of meat. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Option. And it's called no. It's a nice guy because I would clearly die of a heart attack after eating it. <laughs> oh, nice. Just a sometimes Another food, death, I guess. The name is no. good. <laughs> All right. It is time to rank this thing. So once again, reminder of the scale. Failure. Participant. Bronze, silver, gold. Cubic zirconia. Dando, I'll let you go first this time. What, what other episodes have you given Cuban zirconia to? Oh, all the essential ones, of course. <laughs> um, is, would, would you be bothered if I said this one deserved to be there? Because I think this is fucking near perfect. Absolutely, go yeah, for it's it. It's your yeah, personal yeah. ranking, man. It's what you believe. Oh, it's my personal ranking. I, yeah. This was this is easily probably, it, it would be my top 10 episodes now. When you go back and watch wow. it, and you really think, what is The Simpsons? This is The Simpsons. It's got everything you want in The Simpsons. Laughs. Love, heart, everything you want. So mm -hmm. it's got to be zirconia for me. Guy, what do you reckon? Cubic zirconia. Cubic zirconia. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> BT? I'm on a gold. Um, it's not to say there's anything technically wrong. Gold is a good ranking. Uh, something about it just didn't grab me as hard as, you know, sometimes they do. But I'm still kind of contemplating. I'm still marinating. We're rushing a lot of things today. <laughs> well, I'm going Cubic Zirconia as well. And I think you can say this for a lot of season three episodes that it feels very pivotal for the show. Like, mm. I mean, a lot of advances were being made in season two and three. And in a lot of ways, they were still finding their feet and groove. But I think this is like just such a milestone of an episode that really was doing something different to certainly what The Simpsons were doing at the time and other sitcoms. So, yeah, absolutely essential in my mind. Uh, did that sway you any? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say purely for the quality of the music and the fact that my only complaint on this one is the fact that it needs to be more of it to really flesh it out. I'll, I'll shift up to the cubic. Hey, unanimous yep. cubic zirconia. We are giving this episode the Simpsons Index Award for Outstanding Achievement in the Field of Excellence. <laughs> and yeah, sorry, you mentioned with the music as well. I forgot mm. to mention as well. When she's playing bunk with me tonight and the string swell that just creep up. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Very I love, subtly. love, love it so much. Yeah, um, it's fantastic. So good. All right. Well, yeah, I know we're low on time, so we better get out of here. Mm -hmm. But Guy and Dando, seriously, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. This was, yeah, such a treat. I apologize how long it's taken. It's just, as you've seen, my son, I don't know whether you're leaving it in or not. My son interrupted us mid-show. Kids are screaming outside the room. It's hard to record at night here at Four yeah. Finger Discount Studios. So, I'm, I've been really excited to be on here and I've had a blast. I'd love to come back on whenever you're willing to have me. Absolutely. This was fine. I, mean, I, I guess I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Uh, Elliot, JBT, it, thank you so much. This was this was an absolute blast. It really was. Yeah, it's, it, 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 maybe it makes me feel in, in, like, like I'm so like, I don't know. I feel like our show's not as good anymore because we've been on this show now. I'm like, oh, so this is what the good oh, shows you. do. <laughs> oh, you, you made us raise the bar. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, no, we really appreciate it. And, mm. you know, for the few people that wouldn't be aware, you know, what, where can people find you on the internet? I can you find us on our website, fourfingerdiscount.com.au, uh, at fourfingerpod on Twitter, at fourfingerdiscount on Instagram, uh, and you can just find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash fourfingerdiscount. Uh, a lot of, you'd be surprised, well, you wouldn't be surprised, but a lot of the people who follow us on Facebook were like, I thought you were just a meme page. I didn't realize you were a podcast page. <laughs> but I feel like a lot of those people, we've got, I think it's what, close to 300,000 followers on there now, Guy, or wow. something? Something so like, along those lines, it's yeah. Just, it's just handy to have that as a mm. free promotional tool for the show, at least, you know? No, absolutely. And, and yeah, we haven't said that. Like, yeah, your Simpsons meme page is phenomenal. That's, yeah, mm. uh, my entry point into the show and listening to your podcast. And, yeah, absolutely loving all the work that you're doing. And, yeah, all the fun stuff happening at your Patreon page as well. Now that uh, and, yeah, I wanted to say a massive thank you to you, sir, for your support on Patreon. It's, love you for it. Thank you so much. No, nah, absolutely. Love Love seeing podcasters do more podcasting. Yep. And BT, where can they hear us do more podcasting? 
Well, they can, while they're on Patreon, they can go over to patreon.com slash sidequeststudios. That is the blanket for everything that we do, and you get instant access to over 80 exclusive podcasts for as little as $5 a month. That's nothing, and it's basically theft from us to you. Yeah. Did you guys quit your job to podcasts as well? Uh, not quite. <laughs> I'm sorry. I used to think that Dando was, was insulting. Yeah. I used to think Dando was a salt and a spruiking, but BT, you've just made him look like the pretender that he is. Uh, well I've done, sir. I've done that exact <laughs> script. It's good spruiking. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're doing a lot of fun Simpsons focused content as well, mm-hmm. like uh, reviewing all the DVD extras that are on the box sets, and also we're reviewing movies that star the cast of The Simpsons. Yep. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So- deal it, guy. <laughs> <laughs> As long as we can come watch, it's all good. Yeah. Uh, it's been a lot of fun reviewing such uh, weird and wild range of films like Godzilla and Maximum Overdrive. And, and we just watched Heat. And oh, Heat. Nice. Good movie. Heat's mm. great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot mention Heat without that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, patreon.com slash SideQuest Studios. But yeah, once again, thank you very much for Finger Discount. Thank you, Dando. Thank you for having us, sir. It's been an absolute delight. Absolutely. Thank you, Guy. Thank you very much, Elliot Jane BT. The pleasure was all mine, and partly Dando's. <laughs> and I'm sure BT's as well. Thank you, buddy. Will you bunk with me tonight? <laughs> and I'm Elliot J. O'Neill. That's all the mustard in the house. There may have been a subtle clue in that uh, my exit line there that you may have missed. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Simpsons Index podcast, which is also an online spreadsheet available at thesimpsonsindex.com. You can also check out our other shows, like Pulp Fury Radio, our scripted fiction podcast, which tells all original stories across a range of pulp genres, and Thrones of Game, where we review Game of Thrones in reverse order. Links to those podcasts and more will be available in the show notes. Now, there's no bonus scenes for this episode, so we'll catch you next week.